Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Automating Culture and High Content Imaging of 3D Organoids for In Vitro Assessment of Compound Effects. I am Marie Stone of LabRoots, and I'll be your moderator for today's event. Today's educational web seminar is presented by LabRoots and brought to you by Molecular Devices. To learn more, visit MolecularDevices.com. We encourage you to participate today by submitting any questions you may have during the presentation. To do so, simply type them into the Ask a Question box and click Send. We'll answer as many questions as we have time for at the end of the presentation. You may also submit any technical issues here as well if you have trouble seeing or hearing the presentation. This webinar is educational and thus offers free continuing education credits. Please click on the continuing education window at the bottom of your screen to obtain your credits. I'd like to now welcome our speaker, Dr. Oksana Serenko, Senior Research Scientist at Molecular Devices. Oksana, you may now begin your presentation. Thank you so much. So hello everyone. I'm Oksana Sirenko, Senior Scientist from Molecular Devices, and I will be talking today about high content imaging and automation of organoid research. So why there is an interest in 3D biology? There is a great unmet need for biological model systems that better represent human biology than 2D cell cultures. 3D biology models projected to have improved correlation to human physiology, and they also at lower cost as animal models. So biology now trends toward increased complexity of assay models. 3D microtissues, organoids, and organ on chip represent transition between cell assay to tissues and organs. Utility of 3D biology is expected to expand for disease modeling and also compound testing. So technologies and instruments should also increase complexity and capabilities to enable scientists to work with those more complex biological systems. So what are their organoids? Those are 3D biological microtissues that contain several types of cells. They represent complexity, organization, and structure of a tissue. And they resemble at least some aspects of functionality of tissues. So this is a relatively novel field in cell biology. And even so, uh, 3D biology was uh, used for cancer research and also uh, developmental biology in the past. The official uh, milestone creation of uh, 3D biology is uh, gut organoids from adult intestinal stem cells. That was a publication in 2009. Another big milestone is 2013 when cerebral organoids were derived from induced pluripotent stem cells. Here is a general organoid workflow. So the cells which uh, give rise to organoids could be derived from primary tissues like gut, lungs, or kidney, and they rebuild in tissue in a culture. Example is a cleaver slab gut organoid. Also, organoids could be derived from induced pluripotent stem cells or stem cells, and they culture and develop into multiple cell type organoids with organized structure. Example would be Knobloch lab brain organoids. So the most typical method for formation organoid is a culture cells in matrigel domes. Typically, cells just premixed with matrigel and droplets placed into 24 well plates or other plate format to form a solid droplet like a dome. Then media added on the top of the structure and then growth factors promote growth and differentiation of those organoids inside the matrigel. So organoid culture is a long process which includes several steps with different media. During this process, cell phenotype needs to be monitored. Typically, this process used for understanding developmental biology and tissues. So this long process has a lot of technical hurdles and also opportunity for method development. 
So the methods and readouts are still evolving. They include microscopy, viability assay, morphology, marker expression, PCR, and also secretion study or viral infectivity. So assays now at low throughput, but methods and instrumentation are currently evolving to facilitate research and enable high throughput screening. So I will be talking about high content imaging of organoids and also development of methods for automation of cell culture of organoids. So this is screening workflow for 3D organoids, which uh, in general resemble general screening workflow for any cell types. It includes culturing cells in microtiter plates, in this case in mitrogel. Then those cells are treated with uh, different compounds or growth factors. Then they stain and imaged. So for imaging 3D structures like organoids, uh, you should use uh, confocal microscopy. So by using confocal microscopy, you can uh, take it this stack of images through the volume of organoids and also through the volume of matrigel. And then that this stack could be converted, either compressed into um, 2D projection, like maximum projection, similar to what's presented here, or it could be converted into 3D space. Then uh, the analysis could be performed either in 2D or 3D. And that analysis would give number of measurements, which would describe and characterize the phenotype of organoids and also cells inside of organoids. They would describe area, volume, diameter, depth, intensity, or shape of organoids. They also can describe and count individual cells within organoids, either in 2D projection or in 3D. And they would count different cell types, life and dead, or with different markers, and also area and volumes, distances, and intensities. So for imaging, we use Image Express Confocal HDAI system, which has seven-channel laser light source, which present brighter images and also flexibility. It also has a spinning disk confocal technology, automated water immersion, and also in CARTA image analysis software, which has machine learning algorithms. So in this example, you can see how laser elimination greatly decreases exposure time and also the time for your essay. Also, it provides uh, great flexibility for the choice of chloroform or for different essays. I will describe several examples of organoids. So I will start from lung organoids. Lung organoids were grown in matrigel uh, from uh, primary lung airway epithelial cells in matrigel domes for eight weeks. We use reagents and protocols uh, from stem cell technologies. So here is a lung organoid workflow which starts from 2D preculture that uh, then uh, organoids form in matrigel domes, followed by growth and differentiation, and then compound treatment and experiment. In this slide, you can see images of different magnification of organoids. So you can use low magnification to capture entire dome with organoids inside. You can use higher magnification to capture individual organoids or individual cells inside organoids. So you can see here the great change in the size and development of organoids over um, the weeks of development. So interestingly, since organoids are hollow inside, you can actually image through the organoid objects and also you can image through the matrigel layer and capture number of organoids, one on the top of another. So you can also convert it into projection image uh, right here. This is maximum projection. So you can uh, image live organoids 
either in transmitted light or using life staining, in this case, like viability stain, or you can fix organoids and then restain with different markers. Here is a phalloidine stain, a mitochondria stain, nuclear stain, and you can use a lot of different markers. So here you can see example stepping through the Z stack, and you can um, uh, see structures inside the organoid. So this small cavities kind of converted into bigger lumen. So here is projection image of mature culture. You can see organoids of different size. Here you can see one image which actually cuts through different organoids. So you can see those cavities inside. We have used different stain. In this case, we use uh, ethidium homodimer stain and nuclear stain, ethidium homodimer for dead cells. Here we use mitochondria stain in red. So here we have used uh, phalloidine stain for fixed spheroids, uh, fixed organoids, and also mitochondria stain. You can see those complex structures inside. So here we have used a transmitted light, and we collected time lapse, and you can see movement of cilia here. And interestingly, this uh, small organoid was kind of rotating for days in the same place. So you can see different um, size and um, complexity of shapes of organoids. And we will try also to mimic some disease modeling like inflammation by addition of inflammatory cytokines. So we have added to TNF alpha, IL-1 and interferon. And you can see here uh, the partial death and disintegration of organoids. So we develop also different methods for analysis of these images. So in the simplest uh, case, you can use projection image and uh, just run live dead image analysis algorithms. Here you can see image of object and here analysis masks. So this is for live cells and red for dead cells. And you can define number and percentages of live and dead cells for different treatments and also measure dose response. So we have also used machine learning based analysis in transmitted light. So when you use an algorithm, it can do a pretty good job to find round objects, but then you can further train this algorithm for even better precision. So to do so, you have example images and you trace it around uh, for the objects which is uh, you design as organoid and also you define the area which is not organoid. And after just a few iteration, you can get very good analysis and segmentation and you can do um, different measurements on those objects like count and uh, identify area, uh, diameter or, in, or density. So here is example how we use custom model editor in MetaExpress software, which allows to find organoids here. We typically do it for um, uh, first stain as objects. And then it allows to find uh, nuclei and individual cells or cytoplasm or mitochondria inside of objects. So here example of cytoplasm. So then you can actually take uh, higher resolution images, which uh, define all kind of individual cells and also subcellular structure. And you can run analysis either in 2D or in 3D, which allows to identify uh, organoid objects and also identify objects inside objects. Like it can find, uh, count cells inside different organoids it can count also life and dead cells or different type of cells inside of each organoids. So in this example, we run a 3D analysis. So in this experiment, we have done toxicity studies of uh, a number of um, anti-cancer compounds, which were uh, known to cause lung toxicity 
One example is ibrutinib. So you can see those cells become dead and it's positive for ethidium homodimer. And you run 3D analysis and you define those cells. And here you can observe concentration dependency and you can see that actually in 3D, uh, the system was more sensitive to toxic effects than in 2D, which was done to the same cells. So to um, elaborate more how this analysis done, so in this example, you can see so that individual um, images in a Z-stack analyzed separately. And then this um, information is converted in 3D space. So you can get this 3D space rendering and more important, you can get measurements. So in this example, we analyze liver spheroids treated or untreated, treated with liver toxic compound and um, stained with a light dead stain. And you can see different liver toxic compound and changes in phenotype. And you can actually quantitate these changes by 3D analysis. So you can uh, quantitate number of life and dead cells. And also in this case, like you can quantitate volumes like a volume of live cells, so this cytoplasm of live cells, this is nuclei, and you can see dramatic changes with different compounds. So we characterize number of 3D measurements for phenotypic changes, and we find that some measurements actually follow for parametric um, dose response uh, uh, curve, and uh, those are include like counting life cells or counting their volume or intensities. And some other measurements like let's say steroid volume or number of dead cells may also describe phenotypic changes, but may or may not follow this four parametric uh, distribution. So when you actually use multi-parametric analysis, it uh, gives you more opportunity to fully describe the changes which you see. So this is example of intestinal organoids. This mice intestinal organoids. So this is four uh, x magnification on twenty x objective. So this is live stain. So you can see all details here very nicely, and also we. Uh, develop this life dead assay for different applications. So here we try to model inflammation by addition of cytokines, TNF and IL-17. And here we did uh, toxicity studies in uh, anti-cancer agents, cisplatin and doxorubicin. And we use life dead analysis and uh, staining to actually quantitate the number and ratio of life and dead stains. So here example of uh, higher magnification analysis of intestinal organoids. So those cells are actually internal expression of, uh, uh, of uh, serotonin induced cells. And you can do analysis and uh, provide quantitation of those insulin expressing cells in different condition. So this is another example of organoid with um, um, staining, uh, with uh, imaging, and also analysis mask. So you can also reveal complex structure of different organoids and convert it into 3D space. So now I would like to describe brain organoids. Uh, so this is very important um, model, obviously, for understanding diseases, and it could be used uh, uh, by taking samples induced pluripotent stem cells um, derived from the blood of patients, or uh, the mutation could be genetically engineered by CRISPR mutation. So those brain organoids were derived from induced pluripotent stem cell using nobly Lancaster method and also we use kit from stem cell technologies. Uh, so you can see growth and development of uh, those um, organoids over um, um, extended period of time. So this method includes um, starting from induced pluripotent stem cells and then cultures them in a, a U-shaped low attachment plates and then 
placing those organoids into matrix gel and uh, continue our culture of those over kind of long, long time. So we culture them for five months for now. And so this is an example of organoids. They grow pretty big. And this is um, a staining of um, uh, live organoids with calcium dye. So this is another figure showing size. And uh, this is um, a machine learning based analysis of those different organoids over the time. So we use this deep learning based segmentation of different uh, organoids with different shape. And we can use machine learning based classification of shape of those organoids. So right now we're working on development of calcium um, imaging protocols. And this is uh, somewhat challenging in this big organoids because uh, uh, these um, spikes um, appear in, um, in, a, in different places and you uh, need to capture those. But we can actually capture those using time-lapse imaging and we can actually find other analyze those by using region of interest. So we also proceed with conventional staining. So this is staining with SOX2. And here you can see a uh, beta tubulin expression. So this is uh, expression of different markers in this stack. And here you see maximum projection image. And so right now, kind of, we still follow this culture and trying to kind of develop methods for better analysis. On a re related note, I would like to describe some of our older study, which we have done not with brain organoids, but with uh, neurospheroids. Those were from stemonics. Those structures are kind of not having the complex uh, uh, morphology, but they were having very actually consistent and spontaneous beating profile. And we were able to actually use our instruments to uh, see her as, uh, recording of calcium plexus and see effect of different compounds slowing down or speeding up or kind of um, effect of some toxic compounds. And uh, so here you see an example of modification of pattern with different uh, um, uh, neurotransmitters. And here you can see example how you can use software. Here is Flipper instrument software for analysis. So we have used this method before to identify uh, um, neurotoxic effect of different uh, compounds. And uh, so right now we're working on developing it, this method using actually this mature and developed uh, um, brain organoids. So I would like to uh, switch now to cancer research and describe how we use high content imaging to characterize phenotypic changes in cancer, spheroid and organoids. So, uh, we work with uh, cell line derived uh, uh, spheroids. Uh, so this is colon cancer uh, spheroids and uh, we form those using low attachment plate and treat it with different compounds and develop method how we can characterize those different phenotypes by using software. Right now we have collaboration with academic researchers from Tulane University where we use patient-derived xenograft uh, um, um, cells and uh, organoids to study effect of different drugs. Uh, so we use uh, cell line, which was derived from primary tumor, from triple negative um, cancer tumor sample, and we form organoids from those and treat those with different drugs. And this is example of um, uh, tumoroids untreated and treated with romidipsin. And this is how phenotype changes. So we use light dead stain here and also quantitation of uh, uh, these images. So this is example of um, um, a response of, uh, to different drugs in those uh, tumoroids. 
So you can see actually that uh, uh, for um, taxol, it's much higher effective concentration than for uh, those other um, uh, new promising drugs. And this actually finding was um, corresponding to actually clinical data. So which gives a great implication for possibly using this uh, type of assays and high content analysis for uh, uh, development of best um, therapy for specific uh, patients. So this is another example of uh, tumoroids stained for different cancer markers like ICAT green and CD44. Uh, and you see also modulation of um, those marker expression after compound treatment. And you can run analysis similar to as I described before, where you can find different uh, spheroids and also characterize them for life, death, and expression of different markers. You can also do multi-spheroid um, uh, assessment in these multi-cavity plates and look for uh, clonality of different tumors. In addition, I'm going to, uh, to describe several other uh, types of uh, 3D models and analysis, uh, how you can do with this. And this is example of angiogenesis sprouting in um, organ and a chip mimetas plate. So those angiogenic sprouts were growing through, um, uh, through the matrix from um, um, tube in of those plates, and uh, the degree of this growth and also respond to different compounds, you can quantitate by analysis. So you can actually define and quantitate those so sprouts and number of cells inside of those sprouts. And to do so, you again take a Z-stack and then convert it into 3D space and then define number of those sprouts as well as their lengths and number of cells. So this is another example. So this is Mirai And this is um, cardiac uh, spheroids and they beat in, in a culture and you can actually treat them with different compounds and uh, record calcium flux activity. And this recorded activity, you can analyze those recording and define different parameters like uh, amplitude, frequency, distance between peaks or uh, other parameters. So this is example from 2D and 3D culture of um, uh, cardiac uh, cells, uh, stem cell derived cardiac cells. And you see effect of different compounds which cause a specific pattern which was uh, um, associated with uh, severe cardiac toxicity. And this is how software defines those peaks and also primary and secondary peaks. So uh, right now we're working with cardiac organoids and those organoids were derived from induced pluripotent stem cells. And you can see this calcium fluxes and also actually mechanical beating in a, in a culture. And you can record it using imaging method. And you can visualize those peaks and quantitate their parameters. And also you can do uh, toxicity assessment by staining and imaging. So here, for example, you do imaging and um, com assess compound effect over uh, uh, time treatment with different drugs. So now I would like to describe a little bit more uh, the image analysis software and also describe how you can use machine learning tools for better analysis. So in this example, we use cell painting assay, which uh, paint different uh, um, uh, compounds, uh, different components of cells, and you can get uh, this feature extraction by um, analysis and uh, measure uh, not only a number of features, but also the relative position and intensity and colocalization. 
So this analysis is very complex and gives you a lot of readouts. So to take full advantage of it, we use hierarchical clustering analysis with the help of core life analytics and uh, strata miner software. So we use this workflow for complex analysis of um, different compounds and different uh, phenotypic effects. Uh, more interestingly, we also done label free image analysis using machine learning alg algorithms. So those so organoids um, it could be kind of a simple shape like round, but still it's a, a lot of complexity and a lot of image artifacts which can cause uh, errors in analysis. And also you can have uh, complexity of your labware or um, complexity of your culture. And so it is uh, very difficult to develop actually the method which would account for all of those features. But if you use uh, this uh, machine learning algorithm, so this become very easy. So all you have to do, you, you have your training sets and uh, you define the features which you're looking for and also you define the features which you want to exclude. And with few iteration, you can have pretty good analysis. So we have done it for lung organoids, for intestinal organoids, and even uh, for intestinal organoids, we define different um, organoids, like differentiated from undifferentiated from dead organoids by their different features. Uh, we defined uh, growth and development of um, stem cell colonies and also monitoring of growth of organoids uh, during the time. Finally, we use it for uh, those uh, patient-derived organoids so we can actually quantitate and define the drug effect over time even without uh, uh, staining. And so this is very helpful if you want to um, attribute the third dimension, not only different compounds and different concentration, but also time response. So last but not least, I would like to describe uh, the automation of the uh, culture and all complex uh, 3D biology workflow. So at Molecular Devices, we build this innovation center which includes a number of different instruments and uh, which enable automation of different steps of workflow, not only analysis. So it includes cell culture, cell monitoring, media exchange, compound addition, and also scheduling of multiple processes. So this uh, um, complex contains some molecular devices instrument like image express uh, system and also uh, plate reader and plate washer but also it contains uh, some external vendors like um, this Beckman Calter Biomac i7 or automated incubator Lyconic as well as centrifuge and uh, the robot. So we developed a number of protocols which allow to automate entire cell culture. So you can see here how the robot picks up plate from um, automated incubator and puts it into the Beckman instrument. Then inside the Beckman instrument, those plates get picked up and uh, the lid removed and then this plate started to be fed by media. So we developed protocol in collaboration with Beckman, which allowed gentle media exchange with this matrigel domes and this pipette and done off center, not to disturb those matrigel domes. And it actually works pretty nicely. So in this example, you can see again the feeding of uh, Organoids. So in this case, this is addition of media. And after feeding is done, so then plate actually um, goes to the back of um, uh, instrument where it's picked up by robot. So interestingly, we also uh, 
develop protocols for uh, plating of cells uh, inside these matrigel domes. So you can see how actually automated process uh, easily uh, performing those uh, matrigel droplets, which is not so easy to do by hands. So we use like, great shield uh, um, plates and uh, we do this process very successfully. After that, we allow it to solidify it and then add media on the top and it goes back to incubator. So in addition, then we develop uh, separate protocols where uh, monitoring and imaging could be done automatically. So the robot takes out uh, plates and put it automatically into uh, our imaging system, and then it activates the protocols which we previously developed, and uh, so you can do this monitoring process um, without human participation. Then analysis uh, is done automatically, which can monitor the growth and development of different organoids, and so you can actually um, develop entire protocol which would enable automated maintenance and setup and also assay of your organoids. So this is pretty much it what I wanted to describe. So I would like to acknowledge my co-workers from Molecular Devices, especially Angelina Lim, and also our um, collaborators from different institutions who help us to work with uh, different organoids. So thank you so much for your attention. If you will have additional questions, please um, go to our website, moleculardevices.com, or please contact us directly. And if you need some protocols or if you need more information. Thank you so much again for your attention. Thank you, Oksana, for your informative presentation. We will now start the live Q&A portion of the webinar. If you have a question you'd like to ask, please do so now. Just click on the Ask a Question box located on the far left of your screen. We'll answer as many of your questions as we have time for. Let's get started. Our first question is, can this methodology be adopted for fixed tissue? Yes, thank you so much for that question. This is a very important question. And in fact, uh, yes, this could be easily adopted for uh, um, uh, for uh, fixed tissues. It just needs to include fixing steps into the process. So we have done it. So we have done it for cell painting assay using automation, and we are now developing a protocol for uh, spheroids and organoids. All right, thank you. Uh, next question, what are the main benefits of machine learning analysis for organoids? This is also an interesting question. So uh, there are two main approaches. You can either define uh, the changes and objects, uh, how you see it and what you expect to see. For example, you can use your own judgment to define uh, positive or negative cells for uh, some marker and you set up thresholds accordingly to get your analysis and quantitation. But you can use a different approach which would include machine learning. And this is especially useful for, uh, uh, for the samples where you either don't uh, really sure what to expect or with the high complexity of samples or with the samples uh, like uh, which you get with using transmitted light. Those don't have much changes in intensity, but have a lot of subtle changes, which actually machine learning algorithm may spot much better and analyze more efficiently. So to do this uh, kind of analysis, you have your positive sample and your uh, negative sample, and you train the software uh, which uh, features uh, belong to a standard control phenotype or as to change phenotype. And we get really good results with uh, 
with um, many samples, especially with transmitted light samples. All right, thank you. Um, next question, this is a multi-part question. Um, how thick is the tissue? What type of microfluidic chip do you use? And how often do you change the media? Actually, we don't use uh, microfluidic chip with the exception of Mimitas plate. We have some protocol developed for Mimitas plate. We use uh, this um, uh, automation and technique mostly using standard plates. All right. Um, thank you. Next question. Do you have some 3D culturing technique in between the 24W plates and incubation? Can you do 3D cell culture inside incubators? Okay, so the first part of question is uh, very kind of um, uh, relevant. So we done these um, techniques in 24 well plates, and you can do this automation, automated seeding of um, a matrigel dome, automated media exchange or compound treatment, and then you can do imaging. So the imaging is uh, pretty efficient in 24 well plates, just you may be limited with the ch uh, to choose the objective. Uh, so we, ha we have uh, done 3D cell culture inside incubator, but we, we cannot do any liquid handling or media exchange inside the incubators. With our setup, it's two different instruments, and we use the robotic arm to move between those instruments. All right, thank you. Um, next question. Do the organoids contain sensors for RF signals, such as nano CMOS technology, or is it based on piezoelectrical bases of the polymers or advanced materials used with the cells? Uh, so this is um, um, probably a more difficult question to answer. We don't have any sensor uh, is, uh, currently in our organoids, but this is actually a good call to implement for future assay development. Um, so the sensor would be helpful for uh, multiple applications. All right, thank you. Um, next question. What are the implementations of this kind of automation over bioinformatics? Uh, so we haven't used uh, bioinformatics um, uh, very extensively in this setup. So uh, the one approach we use for kind of data management, we use the core light technology um, collaborative platform. So we have um, done some data management, which coming out of imaging instruments. But yeah, bioinformatics, of course, is a very important tool and would be very useful, uh, especially when you run um, a big screen. So this is something we need to implement more. All right. Um, next question. How reliable is the automated media exchange? So we have done a number of testing, and we found that it is uh, very reliable. So we use Beckman instruments. Our collaborators are using Hamilton instrument. And in fact, these all automated media handling techniques are very reliable, but may request some adjustment, especially if you deal with uh, matrigel or other variety of liquids. All right, thank you. Um, and it looks like we have one more question. Which measurements are the most useful for comparison of organoids and different treatments? This is also a good question. So we have done some characterization of multiple um, measurements. So there is the complex phenotypic changes going on in organoids and other um, complex 3D systems. So it is a um, different number of objects, different size, distribution of size, and also kind of shape and uh, intensity of different um, uh, staining markers. But most important, we found that um, 
uh, it is important to count objects, count cells actually inside organoids and not only count them but also characterize them for uh, like life dead or positive or negative, differentiated, undifferentiated. And so we typically characterize uh, 10 to 15 of different readouts from imaging, but we found that some of them have more uh, um, dose response uh, dependency than other. So, for example, like counting live cells or counting like positive or negative cells, uh, we found to be the most reliable marker, but other readouts also help in. Um, um, assessment of different phenotypic changes. All right. Thank you, Oksana. Do you have any final comments for our audience? So thank you so much for joining. So this is very exciting area of uh, uh, investigation and for development, and we are working hard to implement different methods and uh, improve our instruments to uh, meet uh, uh, growing customer needs. So if you have any suggestions or additional questions about uh, methods or technology or instruments, please email us. We'll be happy to answer your questions. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you again, Oksana, for your time today and your important research. We would also like to thank LabRoots and our sponsor, Molecular Devices, for underwriting today's educational webcast. Before we go, I'd like to thank the audience for joining us today and for their interesting questions. Questions we did not have time for today and those submitted during the on-demand period will be addressed by the speaker via the contact information you provided at the time of registration. This webcast can be viewed on demand. LabRoots will alert you via email when it's available for replay. We encourage you to share that email with your colleagues who may have missed today's live event. Until next time, goodbye.